Hello, this is the AI Lab. Today it's my pleasure to welcome Jakob Mshangama. Jakob is the Executive Director of the Future of Free Speech and the Research Professor at Vanderbilt University. He is also a Senior Fellow at the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression, FIRE, and the author of Free Speech, A History from Socrates to Social Media. The reason? An article entitled AI chatbots refuse to produce controversial output. Why that's a free speech problem. Let's hear what Jakob has to say. So um, in your article, you mentioned that AI chatbots refused to generate content for 40% of controversial prompts. How does this high rate uh, of refusal conflict with the principles of free speech and access to diverse information? Yeah, so um, the promise of generative AI is is huge. Uh, so this is the first time in human history that new communications technology does not solely depend on on human input, uh, like the printing press um, or like radio that would convey what what a, what a human being said. With generative AI, you prompt the AI system, the model, and, and it generates uh, content that, that may be of varying quality, but, but, but uh, increasingly sophisticated ways that, that, that AI models reason. Um, and if you want a sophisticated version that you can really have a back and forth to, then limiting or restricting the output and even the ability to 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 make prompts will necessarily affect the um, the underlying capability to reinforce free speech and and especially access to information. So you, that there might be all kinds of of perfectly reasonable um, ways or justifications for prompting a chatbot. On, on a controversial topic uh, that would generate a a response that might be offensive to users uh, around the world, depending on their outlook, whether it's you know religious, ideological, or, or whatever. But if we want s systems that are capable capable of sort of um, strengthening uh, human ability to 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 reason, then I think it's it's dangerous. To put these more or less arbitrary restrictions uh, on it. Also, you know, if you want to compare chatbots, AI chatbots, with social media, it seems counterintuitive to me that the restrictions on AI chatbots, at least according to our small study, are, are, are more wide-ranging than those that pertain to social media platforms. On social media platforms, if I write something on Instagram or on Threads or on X. You know, I'm I'm communicating with the with the broader public, and at least potentially millions of people could see it. So you so so that you know you, you can better understand why there would be some restrictions on that. If I communicate, if I interact with an AI chatbot, it's me and the AI system. I, you you would need actively for me to post whatever controversial content was was generated for that to be visible to the outside world. So, so I think that um, is um, is something that interferes in a process, in an iterative process, um, where I hopefully can get useful information from uh, an a AI chatbot, even if some of the the prompts um, generate content that might be controversial or offensive. Yeah, that, that, that is a good point. The fact that at the end of the day on, on social media, you're broadcasting and with a chatbot, you're one on one. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, uh, and, and think about it this way, you know, r right now, generative AI is, is being um, built in to word processing, to email mm -hmm. clients and so on. So would you take those principles from from chatbots into Word, for instance, or Google Docs, you know, would it be acceptable to the ordinary users to say, you know, you're writing a, a, a document on on blasphemy and then you quote, you know, you, you look at the case law from the European Court of Human Rights on blasphemy. 
um, and you you write a quote from 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 one of the cases, and then Word uh, says, "Well, I can't complete that sentence because it violates uh, our our our, <laughs> our policies." Or you finish your your document and you want to send an email, and then then Outlook tells you, "You know, you we, I can't send that email because it contains." Uh, content that violates uh, our policies that is deemed harmful or, or offensive. I think most people would instinctively recoil at that. They would say, well, this is getting to sort of Orwellian 1984 standards. But what's really the difference between that and my interaction with an, with an AI chatbot? That's, that, that's a very, um, yeah, that's a very striking point. And, and you know, the if the boundary between freedom of speech being in danger and freedom of thought uh, being affected exactly. <laughs> is a very is, narrow one then. <laughs> this, is, this is actually one of those where, you know, under international human rights law, freedom of thought is, is absolute, whereas there, you know, there are restrictions on that you can, permissible restrictions on freedom of speech, but freedom of thought really is where, you, you know, this brave new world is really restrictions risk being tentacles into freedom of thought where subtly and in maybe hidden ways um algorithmic restrictions on on ai that we that we rely on in ever more spheres of of, of human life um and not just into certain ways of thinking um that that interfere with with, with freedom of thought i think that's the doomsday scenario Okay, let, let, let's not go there. Let's stay optimistic then. <laughs> um, looking at it from a more technical uh, EU law point of view, uh, do, do you think that AI, that, that self-censorship uh, with, with AI chatbots, could it conflict with the systemic risk provisions in the Digital Services Act, the DSA, as, as, as we say in, in Brussels, especially when it comes to its impact on free expression and public discourse? Um, I think this was probably something that was not contemplated because the DSA uh, was um, was in the pipeline before um, ChatGPT really brought um, generative AI to the fore. Um, but um, the AI Act um, also includes an obligation to assess and, and mitigate systemic risk. And, and so this question could potentially be relevant under the AI Act, which defines systemic risk as, as a risk that is specific to the high impact capabilities of general purpose AI models, having a significant impact on the union market due to, to their reach or due to actual or reasonable foreseeable negative effects on public health, safety, public security, fundamental rights of the society as a whole. So that's sort of a, a mirror, a mirror, um, provision to, um, to to the DSA. The question would then be whether the interpretation under the AI Act, if we if we assume that that it's relevant to, to this question, would would lean more in a speech protective or a speech restrictive um, manner. Uh, in other words, would would the interpretation be that AI chatbots need to restrict more speech? because you know because um, content generated might be seen as having a neg negative effect on public health let's say if if the chatbot gives inaccurate information on vaccines or um, comes up with with generate uh, generates content that might be seen as discriminatory or hateful or would it would the interpretation still instead be that, um, overly broad restrictions um, would undermine uh, freedom of expression in uh, in the Charter of, of, of Fundamental Rights, uh, of, um, which which is part of, of EU law. And I think my instinct would be that <laughs> that's probably more likelihood of of the uh, of the AI Act if it if applied to this question would would lean in the more speech restrictive way be just because that that seems to be the way that the institutions um lean um but it's not impossible that you know it could be a case by case basis but but i think it's it's just too early to say 
Okay, but you, you refer to case by case basis, but let, let's look at the more umbrella uh, aspect of, of um, moderation policies. In, in your article, you highlight um, that most chatbot moderation policies you've looked at are vague and overly broad. Yeah. Um, like many policies in general on the internet, I, I would say, but maybe a bit more important here because they affect freedom of speech. What changes would you recommend to better align these policies with free speech protections? Yeah, so one approach would be to say, let's use international human rights law as a benchmark. That is something that most major social media platforms commit to on paper, but they don't, you know, in, in actual practice, I don't think they live up to it. Um, we, we did a report, I think, in last year, where we showed that eight major social media platforms, so not AI chatbots, their policies under hate speech have undergone extensive scope creep um, uh, over the past uh, decade, especially probably since 2015, that does not align with, uh, with, with international human rights standards. If you look at ICCPR, Article 19 and, and, and 20, for instance. Um, and, but it would be, so, so even if you ground your policies in international human rights standards, there's a lot of conceptual um, difficulties and uncertainties in how you would, in how you would apply this to an AI chatbot again, because, you know, as we discussed before, I'm interacting with an AI chatbot. It's me and an AI system. This is not public, and and you know, generally, a hate speech policy. You know, you you don't risk, um, you don't violate hate speech laws if I. Uh, write a document on my uh, my laptop that is, you know, even if I'm in Germany, probably um, if I write something that denies the Holocaust or something else, you know, on my in, in a word document that I never share and don't intend to share with the with with the world. Um, so, um, so in that sense, it it, it becomes conceptually probably more difficult to apply international human rights standards. Um, but I think that, I think it's important not to adopt a sort of uh, too um, harm oriented um, principle to um, policies on, on AI chatbots. I think we have to distinguish between different harms. So one one is sort of um, you want to prevent a, an, a generative AI system of, of being able to come up with code that could unleash a virus that could, um, that could down financial systems around the world. That's a very tangible harm. But when it comes to issues like disinformation and misinformation, which, first of all, is not per se prohibited um, under uh, international human rights law, is in many ways protected under freedom of expression, that becomes much, it's, it's a much less tangible harm and a much more conditional one. Because if I have a, a, a discussion, quote unquote, with an AI chat about an issue, it might come up with, with it might come up with answers that are initially factually incorrect, but I, it's an iterative process. So I can prompt it and say, oh, have you thought about this? I might provide it with more information. Um, and so I think that that that's hugely important to keep in place and not just uh, have sort of a, a safety first approach, which will stunt our ability to, to learn from this iterative process um, that, that you can have with generative AI systems uh, as they become as they become better and better. And it also, I think, is a way to insist on, on, on sort of keeping the human being in charge. You know, I should be responsible for how I use the information that is generated by a chatbot. If I want to share something, if I want to share a reply from a, from, from a chatbot, it should, from the outset, be me who is responsible, you know, um, for, for doing it and not, uh, not, not, not the chatbot, at least when it comes to categories such as 
dis and misinformation or or hate speech that are very subjective um, versus sort of more clear and objective harms like producing code for for a um, uh, for, for for malware or you know uh, a recipe for um, a bomb or, or chemical weapons or, or the like. Okay, well, th thank you, uh, Jakob. That was extremely um, useful, I think, and I think it gives a lot of food for thought to those people that think that you know quick solutions uh, to complex <laughs> problems are <laughs> are a thing. <laughs> um, freedom of speech is usually one of the most complex, but mo also most important issues for society, I think, to to tackle. And uh, let's hope policymakers um, go for a nuanced approach, and that your um, vision of the AI AI Act deploying is 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 maybe slightly wrong, and that they take a pro so. freedom of speech <laughs> view of life. Um, I, I, I hope I'm wrong on this one, but thank you so much for <laughs> for, for for this conversation, and uh, it'll be interesting to follow this subject uh, in the coming years for sure. Indeed, thank you.